Well, as we've just heard, earthquakes and tsunamis are not unusual in this region. Richard Lister explains why. Aerial images of Indonesia's disaster zone show the reach and the power of the tsunami, a landscape scoured of buildings and people. It all starts here, on the seabed along the Pacific Rim. Sections of the Earth's crust grind together, causing volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. It's known as the Ring of Fire. This animation shows the location of every earthquake around the world over several years. 90% of them occurred along the Pacific Rim. And of all the countries on that ring of fire, Indonesia is seen as the most prone to earthquake damage. Not all undersea earthquakes cause tsunamis, but those measuring more than seven on the Richter scale pose a real threat. And when one tectonic plate is forced under another, as may have happened in Indonesia, the sudden change to the seabed displaces a huge volume of water, creating giant waves moving as fast as a jetliner. Under the right conditions, those waves can cross an ocean. This animation shows what happened in 2004 when an earthquake measuring 9.1 on the Richter scale generated a tsunami off Sumatra. It reached the African coast just seven hours later. A quarter of a million people were killed. But other factors can make smaller tsunamis deadly too. Look at this long inlet leading to Palu. Even though Friday's earthquake was much smaller than in 2004, this narrow inlet focused the energy of the waves as they raced towards the town. And it could be days before the authorities in Indonesia know just how much damage was done, how many lives were lost. Richard Lister, BBC News.